department and then we will have a session of question and answers with code yeah yes. okay good yes um okay so um i talk with the title of in defense of the scientific integrity of image data and analysis and then uh so um i'm often asked to uh talk about um image data ethics and then uh initially um i acknowledged later but was asked to talk about ethics and then i start searching for what's the situation and so on and then the first thing i I think the most important thing is that it's not really about ethics. And then, uh, so I, that's kind of conclusion, but I would just um, follow step by step. So uh, what the situation is and then what the problem is and so on. So, um, so this is a slide about uh, um, the kind of general scheme of how do we do image analysis in life sciences. And then, uh, um, we do experiments and then we do microscopy, capture image data, and then do image processing and analysis and get results. And then what we know is that this image processing analysis part is pretty much a bottleneck in this uh, flow of work. Um, so at, uh, this is already five years ago, but I think the situation hasn't changed much probably. We have to do the survey and uh, we start feeling like that. But um, so we asked uh, people, uh, um, so which step in imaging-based research project is the most difficult for you? And then uh, we had three uh, choices. Um, so that, uh, one is experiment, second is image analysis, third is microscopy. So that the green one is this uh, image analysis and you can see that among these three different steps, image analysis is the most difficult step. Um, so, uh, and why is that? Yeah, so that uh, today's talk proceeds like this. So that the, let's first think about why do people feel bioimage analysis is difficult? And then as a part of this difficulty, um, many mistakes or misconducts or uh, publications probably comes out of, from this difficulty uh, and then that's, I think, that's one of the most um, um, relevant uh, cause of all those problems. And then we go over different cases of erosions uh, in image data integrity. And then we go to the, um, see the erosions of image analysis integrity, which is slightly different from this data uh, problem. And then uh, we think about how should we deal with these uh, problems? Okay, the first is why it's difficult, image analysis in life sciences. So there are three reasons that I just now try to explain to you. So the first one is that um, number one, we love images probably too much. And then uh, because of, um, um, we have a history, um, even before this modern biology started, that um, uh, we call it natural history. But from this time, we did a lot of sketches, biologists. And then this is one of those uh, sketches. It's beautiful. And then uh, when we see images under microscopes, um, we kind of uh, um, get really strong impression of beauty. And then uh, we capture those things. Uh, with uh, CCD camera these days. But um, the, the thing is that we kind of get um, this confusion between this uh, beauty and scientific value that it has is somehow we cannot, we not really separate those two these things uh, in uh, um, good ways. So that in fact, um, what we're doing with images, digital image data, is that those are numerical information that we're capturing. So that uh, we're capturing, but we are measuring. And then, so that the, this is a one example image of a single cell. And then uh, as you see, uh, that there are a lot of dots. And then if you increase one of those, uh, if you zoom up, 
the image and then start seeing those pixels. And then you see a lot of these squares. Those are the single pixel. And then underneath, in fact, are numbers. So that uh, if you try to see those data, those are the measured values as numbers. So um, um, while we're doing measurements, uh, we kind of uh, um, seen those images and then we kind of distracted those by those patterns. So that's the, I think one of the difficulties that we had, we cannot separate those two different uh, impressions. Difficulty number two. So uh, this is uh, um, um, about image analysis versus bioimage analysis. So the image analysis, is um, a term that has been used pretty much already in computational science. So that, uh, if you open this uh, very famous textbook by Gonzalez and Utz, Digital Image Processing, you can find uh, the definition in the textbook. So this is a computational science. Image analysis is a process of discovering, identifying, and understanding patterns that are relevant to the performance of an image-based task. One of the principal goals of image analysis by computer is to endow a machine with the capability to approximate, in some sense, a similar capability in human beings. That means that um, what we're trying to do with image analysis is let computer to do something like human recognition. So these days we call it uh, artificial intelligence, uh, but in any case, so the image analysis in computational science is to mimic, so to let the computer to mimic human recognition. On the other hand, so uh, what we try to do in life sciences is a bit different. So uh, here's a definition I wrote together with Sebastian Tosi uh, in this uh, um, book in 2016. So in biology, image analysis is a process of identifying uh, spatial temporal distribution uh, and dynamics, I should say, of biological components and images and measure their characteristics to study the underlying mechanisms in an unbiased way. So that uh, there is some contrast with what we want to do in life sciences and what is intended image analysis in computational science, because in case of life science by image analysis, we do not have to be bordered with similarity to the human recognition. We rather want to get rid of such a bias. We don't want to have human recognition because we want to have um, measurement that is as objective as possible. But uh, we rather think that human recognition is biased. So that there's a kind of this two different type of values here that, and then we try to work together and then, um, but we are not yet to solve this uh, <laughs> difference in the goal that we have. We're trying to merge them. And that's what bioimage analysis is. So that uh, this is the second difficulty um, what I would say is that bioimage analysis is a new field in life sciences. And then the way to teach and learn is not established yet. We're trying to do it uh, in no years, but um, yet people feel like it can be learned through image analysis in computational science. Partially, yes, but uh, partially not. So that, uh, we have to make these two fields, life sciences and computational sciences, to be merged and then create a new field by our major analysis to fulfill those uh, new values. The third point, so this is, I call it Lego block pro problem. And these are the, um, a lot of these Legos. And then uh, this in fact is similar to the situation of um, computational resource we have in biomedical analysis. But uh, all these tools are generally called software tool. Yeah. And then, but this is too crude. We have to have a bit higher resolution, subcategories within the software. But uh, we have collection, we have components, we have workflow. And then definition is in the next slide. So I just go and come back to that. A component. 
So uh, components are implementation of certain image processing analysis algorithms, such as class Gaussian blur. Workflow is a set of components assembled in specific order to process image data and yield numerical parameters relevant to the studies uh, of biological system for solving specific biological questions. Workflow templates are a general form of workflow that offers us to tune algorithm parameters or to swap some of the components, such as track mix. Collections is a package of bundling components uh, with an interface or API to use them to construct workflows, software, libraries, uh, which could include image, MATLAB, Python, scikit image, and so on. So that, uh, if you go back to this uh, schematic, uh, figure so that uh, we have a lot of this uh, component which is bundled in the collection like image J. And then in case of image J, we have like uh, 500 or uh, in case of Fiji, there's 800 components bundled when you download. And then those components are, um, um, you get it as a collection. And then from there, in fact, you have to choose right component for a right step in the workflow that you want to explore the biological image data and then put them in order so that you get some numbers, plots, stats, or visualizations. So that, uh, the difficulty here is like this. But uh, this collection of components is, this is like a bag of Legos. Yeah? So Lego is this, okay? It's a bag of Legos, but the problem is that when you download those uh, libraries or software, there is not much of hint how to put them into this workflow right here, okay? So that the difficulty is this red line, arrows right here. So uh, um, in case of Lego, you have, when you open this Lego box, you know, so that, uh, what happens is that you start uh, with opening the, the manual, instruction manual, and then starting from this first page, and then if you follow one by one, one page, one page, uh, one page by one page, the next page, then what you can do is that you just follow that manual and then eventually you get a very nice uh, uh, Millennium Falcon or X-Wing and so on. So that, uh, but in case of uh, this image analysis, we have this, a lot of these components, uh, which we don't have much of instruction manual. So that uh, the difficulty is that we have a backup Lego without instruction manual, and then we need to construct a nice workflow uh, out of that, uh, the backup components. So, that um, we kind of, um, I just listed three uh, difficulties. Number one, visual impact hinders the objective examination by its numbers. Number two, the fact that biomedical analysis is a new field is not well recognized. Number three, resources. Lego blocks without instruction manual is the situation with uh, um, the resource that we have. So, are there any efforts to fight against these difficulties? And one is, of course, uh, we made this uh, um, working with this uh, new BS network of European Bioimage Analysts, which are now, we have uh, 300 members, and then we are organizing trainings, and then we're trying to publish. We want, we making uh, web platforms for Bioimage Analysis. We try to um, develop career path, and then uh, we are organizing conferences. Um, of course, I mean, so that uh, support is until September uh, 2020 now, um, but we try to extend this activity to so that uh, we can even get more uh, um, organized uh, action to support uh, fight against those difficulties. Um, so to explain about this, why uh, we started this. Um, so here is a kind of simple figure of, uh, um, as a metaphor with the sushi uh, um, creation. So that, uh, in case of this uh, sushi, there are, so if you try to make your sushi by yourself, uh, seriously, what you do is that you try to go to the knife shop in Tokyo and then try to find out, so which knife I should uh, buy. 
and that. Um, what you get, uh, you become shocked is that you go to the knife shop in Tokyo and then you have a lot of different types of shops uh, here, I mean, like this. So there are a lot of these knives and then you don't know what, which one you should buy, right? But of course, I mean, um, um, the professional sushi guys, you know, so these guys know which knife should be used uh, for which fish at which part of this uh, cooking procedure. Uh, so that uh, the set of knives that they have, they exactly know at which step which knife should be used. And then they sharpen them and then uh, make a very nice slices of fish and they end up in this nice sushi. So this is an analogous. Uh, okay, so and then there are for these knives, there are bladesmiths who actually are concerned with creating a robust, sharp, very good knives. And then a uh, bladesmith um, do not really care about the cooking procedure itself, but they know what they, um, they are really concerned with this, uh, each of these knives of different types. So that, uh, this is analogous to this um, um, situation that we have a different roles of professionals in biomedical analysis that bladesmith are like developers and software package, uh, developers and software engineers who are creating and making, maintaining or implementing new algorithms uh, as a computational resource. And biomedical analysis guys actually use those knives or software tools and then create workflows and then ends up in a nice sushi or good results. Um, if we go back to this uh, schematic figure of these uh, resources, so uh, these collections and components, so those are created and maintained by developers or mathematicians who create each of these components. And then biomedical analysts are concerned with this workflow. So that uh, um, in case of developers, uh, they are concerned with how efficient what's the higher the speed is better. So that, uh, um, and then it's also that generic uh, implementation is more important for this, uh, um, for this collection and components. On the other hand, biomedical analysis are more concerned with uh, accuracy, scientific accuracy, scientific adequacy, and then the one unique aspect about this workflow uh, construction is that it's very specific. So that uh, sometimes the workflow is not general at all. It's kind of tied pretty much uh, tightly to a very specific biological question. So that uh, it doesn't have to be generic. You know? So that when I read those uh, papers um, about uh, computational resource in life sciences, it's always um, mostly uh, is written that, so how general it is how efficient it is. And uh, so that, uh, but on the other hand, it's, um, in, that, in fact, this biomedical analysis has a different type of interest, which is not general. So that uh, we cannot sell the work in a way like uh, developers. So that's kind of difficulty we have. In any case, um, so that, uh, because uh, we don't have those textbooks for uh, biomedical analysts themselves, uh, we, we try to kind of make these, uh, we already have these two textbooks and then we're now creating the third one. Uh, this is uh, both are freely downloadable so that uh, you can access these um, um, short URL and then you have them, uh, you can download them um, and then um, use them for uh, creation of your own specific biomedical analysis workflows. Um, um, and uh, another new news is that uh, there's a F1000 gateway uh, of Novius is starting up. And then uh, we, we don't have contents yet, but we try to link uh, training materials and then other um, viable resources so that the people has a unique portal to access all those uh, biomedical analysis resources. Okay, so come back to this, uh, um, um, the problem. Or biomedical analysis. So there, there are many uh, pending issues in biomedical analysis, but one of the problem, a big one, is integrity crisis, which means, so this is a quote from 2013 paper um, um, in Plant Cell, 
The Journal of Cell Biology performed a detailed study over the past decades. That study found that 10% of articles accepted for publication included inappropriate manipulation of image data. Okay, so that uh, a surprisingly large number of the authors appeared unaware that they had handled image data inappropriately. So that uh, um, this probably you know this already that there are problems with this uh, how image data are presented or analyzed, and then uh, this situation hasn't actually um, changed. I mean, it might be decreasing, but uh, this is a situation in 2016. Uh, that uh, this is a uh, um, 2016 Nature News. So that uh, this is a manual inspection of 20,000 biomedical papers, and then. Um, it's a manual um, um, survey, yeah? so manually checking uh, many papers, and I found that 4% of papers contain inappropriately duplicated images. So this is only about this specific type of uh, um, mistake or misconduct. But uh, duplication is a copy and pasting of image from one place to the other in the same paper or across uh, two different papers from the same, same lab and so on. So that, uh, um, and then this 4% is already a lot, but if you include other mistakes or misconducts, it's probably much higher. And then, uh, so that, uh, um, of course, so these problems, as you may know, causes a lot of uh, problems because uh, it causes career disasters and then it's efforts by others based on the fake results or mistaken results becomes useless. And then workflows for verification. So that, uh, when you have such a problem, it's often that there be a committee uh, organized for uh, um, the uh, verification of uh, all these problems. And then uh, this is a lot of work. So that uh, in all, it's an enemy of science. So um, um, there are two different types of uh, problem in integrity. So the one is image data, and the one is image analysis. Then uh, um, so that uh, we try to go over these things uh, to see the first example cases. So cases cases of image data problems, and then cases of image analysis problems. Okay, so. Let's see the erosion of image data in a grid. So that it started with uh, uh, 2004. There was an article written by Mike Grossner and Kenneth Yamada uh, in JCB. And then, uh, so there's a title of what's in picture, the temptation of image manipulation. And then there are a lot of different cases uh, was, uh, um, presented in this article showing that there are problems with this uh, um, image data. And then um, just one year after that, there was a very, uh, um, um, a case that became really famous is this stem cell cloning uh, cases. So that, uh, there's a, a many different uh, type of manifestations, I mean, from this is already 15 years ago. And then uh, if you see from this now, uh, I think it's pretty simple, but for example here, but this one is rotated and copy and pasted here, or this one and this one, in fact, is the same uh, image, which was cropped into two different parts and then uh, used as a different conditions and so on. So um, in 2015, the Empo Journal editor, uh, Bern Pufer, Fair um, made a kind of um, um, study on the cases that they encountered, uh, they actually uh, um, had with the submitted papers. And then they categorized all those um, um, cases into three different levels. So that uh, it's very uh, light one, and then uh, slightly serious one, and then a really serious one. And then depending on that um, different level, so that uh, in the um, easy case, they allow revisions and no report to the institution. That's 12%. And then um, may allow revision, rain report to the institution, depending on the, how the authors interacted. This is 8%. 
And then the very serious ones reject and report when they found image manipulation with digital obfuscation, and then uh, like a splicing, cloning, insertion of selective deletion. And then this is a less than 0.5%. So that, uh, in total, there were a lot, about 20% of papers, submitted papers had some problem. Uh, and then uh, of course the serious ones are much less, but um, the problem is that 20% this is kind of a 10% um, of uh, um, um, the, the problems, even without authors recognize themselves until they were told and so on. So um, let's see different levels. So that uh, um, with this uh, very easy case, um, there could be a confusion in uh, uh, using, so this is often the, uh, the one of the um, case that you see often. So this beta acting control right here, loading control here, like this is a copy and paste it in different conditions uh, and kind of reuse. So this is a, of course, it's not really good. And then uh, um, um, these type of uh, um, cloning of same image and using for different conditions um, is of course, I mean, uh, sometimes so lab recommends it or something like this could happen. But in any case, that is not good. And then uh, the second case here is that um, um, here, this image and this image supposed to be a different condition, but the same image is actually there. And then, uh, so what I read from this, uh, um, um, the, what happened to this is that um, the editor had uh, um, uh, asked uh, the authors and then they replied that they were very busy. And then uh, when they are making figures, they actually uh, mixed up the same image for different conditions and copy and paste. But I mean, that could happen, of course, huh? uh, but uh, we don't know. Um, this is from uh, uh, Rosna Yamada uh, paper in 2004 that um, you have, uh, uh, this is a, um, a, paper, a figure in a paper, but when you try to increase contrast or change the lookup table, you see that these guys are actually uh, copied from different place and pasted like this so that they have somehow more cells in the field. Um, so uh, a bit more now, level two. So that uh, data beautification, that could actually, um, um, that could change the resolutions. Okay, so at, uh, um, this is a case with the science paper in 2015 and later retracted in 2017. So that um, um, it's kind of a complex figure. So I try to explain a bit detail. So this is a published results in the left side. And then uh, if you see here that you have a three different conditions, uh, control, SIRB and then SIBRCA1. So this is a rescue condition in the right most. And then this is a SRNA and there's a control condition. And then you have G1 and G2 phase in uh, mitosis phases. And then three different rows. So each row is, uh, um, this is a DNA signal, this is a RAT21 signal, and then this is aura B signal. And then what I'm trying to say is that so that uh, when you try to see this uh, signal difference in G1 and G2 phase, you see that this RAD21 has more stronger intensity in G2 phase in control. Whereas in case of this uh, SRRB treated cells, you see that less signal, I mean, the signal doesn't change. There is no uh, intensification of a signal here, but in, with the rescue experiment, you see that this uh, intensification again, like um, so that uh, this was questions and then uh, after properly adjusted with the fact uh, image uh, intensity contrast, you see that there are not much actually difference you can see from this original data that is treated with the uh, um, right contrast uh, enhancements. So that uh, of course, so uh, with image J, um, I mean, for any kind of image uh, processing analysis software with this uh, single nucleus. So this is a one example that is unrelated to this uh, previous slide. 
but this can be intensified or maybe make it dimmer like this, um, just by adjusting this brightness contrast. And the kind of same thing happened, so that, uh, this is from the same paper uh, with a different figure. But you see that, um, so this is also uh, um, two different conditions. This is a um, cold shock not treated, not treated with cold shock, and this is a after cold treatment. Uh, this is CI, CI and minus and plus, that's cold shock. And then uh, after this uh, cold shock, you see that this green signal is gone. Um, so this is a histone uh, kinase uh, distribution. And then around this red dot, this green signal is not there anymore with this cold treatment. Whereas, so this is a, some rescue uh, of this mutation that you see here in the top row, uh, the second row of this rescue experiment, where you don't see this loss of green signal from here. Um, but again, this is uh, was questions, and then uh, when original data was uh, recovered, and then doing the same kind of contrast adjustment, you see that this loss is not there, so that it just stays like this. So um, this again is also you can do it with the image there like that. I mean, uh, you can just freely change this contrast of this red signal against green signal, and then see that this is dim and this is more higher. So, um, um, of course, um, um, uh, this was done manually, but maybe the authors did just push auto button. We don't know. Uh, and then uh, depending on the situation, you might get such a different contrast by auto button. Uh, so we still have, uh, there's no clue to say they did it intentionally or they just didn't know. No? But the fact is that they made the wrong results and presented. Um, level three. So it could be that there could be um, a manipulation that is very much intended uh, in a way to uh, support their own conjecture and so on. So for example, so this is a deletion work from a gel. But uh, this is the original image, and then you don't see this band anymore. So this is deleted. Um, these cases, are, I, I see them often pretty much, so I call them blot DJs uh, of gels. And then you see this, uh, this is another blot DJing, so that uh, you see that uh, when you see this uh, figure in uh, um, paper, you don't feel any kind of wrong thing, but some people found that this part is actually a copy of this part. And then, uh, um, uh, people getting a bit more skilled with such uh, duplication. And then uh, in this case, this band was cropped and then it was flipped horizontally and then pasted here. But uh, the people getting a bit more clever uh, in making those things. So this is not gel. So this is uh, with uh, um, tissue culture, uh, cell culture. So you see that uh, um, this is uh, some experiment with different level of uh, radiation exposure with zero, two, four, eight grades. But uh, there should be a different uh, plates, uh, but you see that this part is a copy of this part. And then this part is, so that, so it seems that these guys have uh, moved around the same plate and then <laughs> take picture and then name them a, with a different exposure limit. Um, so this is a kind of physical duplication uh, because they're not copy and pasting, but you know, they're using the same place for different things and then see that um, um, they're from different experiments. Uh, duplication, uh, could be done also. This is uh, I already mentioned about this problem, the stem cell case that uh, you crop different parts of a single image and then paste it into different conditions like this. A more kind of severe um, and then it's very hard to detect type of uh, mistake is this addition and insertion. So you start drawing. So that, uh, this is uh, from one paper in 2015, and then this is an East experiment trying to study the septum of cell wall formation. And then you see that this actually is a drawing that um, the cell wall formation was drawn in. 
But uh, this is really a bit tragic case because after a PhD student of the University of Lausanne couldn't reproduce the data from another manuscript, she was preparing some math. She contacted her former student who admitted he had fabricated the data along with two figures in JCB paper. But uh, they couldn't find out until they really do this, trying to reproduce the same result, but they couldn't. And then uh, the guy, actually the guy, I don't know, I mean, guy or uh, uh, the person uh, who actually said that um, they drove these signal, right? So um, um, such a kind of uh, editing uh, is, of course, could be deletion and then uh, adding dots are also there. But in this case, this is uh, immunogold data. And then you see that here, um, original image, there's a, you know, um, very low contrast immunogold dots like this. And then in the um, presented submitted paper, you see that this guy is gone. And then now you have more contrast with these dots surrounding this vesicle. So that uh, it's probably, so what I guess is that this is a docking protein that is uh, they want to enhance the contrast to insist that these guys are on the surface of this physical and so on. Um, of course, I mean, so they kind of uh, made these dots, you know, I mean, they are there, uh, slightly there. You see that these guys are there and then they drew those things, but of course, I mean, deleting and then uh, marking them with a black color is, of course, this uh, very bad manipulation. Okay, so I, we just went through all these different cases of misconducts. Uh, I mean, could be mistake or maybe uh, fabrication, but um, there are some tools that's appearing, like for example, Inspect J in Image J, tools for detecting cosmetic surgeries. So that is, um, um, allows you to find out such a, for example, copy and pasting part of the image to the other, but you can see them with, uh, by making a different type of lookup table and then uh, try to just uh, visualize those uh, manipulations uh, like this. And there are studies uh, going on to automate these uh, detection of uh, shrouds. And then this is one example uh, from this uh, scientific engineering ethics 2017. So that, uh, this is a kind of a um, simulation of the, the, the manipulations uh, for example, that you see that this guy actually copy and pasted multiple times to erase some signal right here. And then this algorithm actually recovers uh, this multiple step of copy pasting uh, from this data uh, like this with this, the color coding is this different steps. And then you can see that they first copy and pasted this part here yellow to yellow, and then afterwards it comes to this larger area that I copy and paste it like this to cover up whatever the signal in behind. And then there are detection services. So that, uh, I mean, there are multiple, but this is from Nature 2017 that um, this one research in the really company already offers automated process that costs 10 to 15 our paper. And I think uh, I recently saw another uh, Nature News that there are actually uh, companies starting in Germany that are actually doing those things uh, much more systematically. Okay, so um, that was, in fact, those copy and pasting and drawing and so on, which actually the handling of uh, image data had some problem or some uh, faking. But there are problems also with image analysis in degree, uh, which has not been really um, uh, discussed, I'd say. So that uh, it could be that um, the erosion of image analysis could be, uh, um, maybe it's, it's kind of pattern, so when you compare patterns, intensity distributions, there could be some problem. And then there's also, there could be uh, issues with thresholding especially with spots, intense measurement, and bit depth treatments, and so on. I'm just trying to show 
what kind of a um, wrong image analysis um, could cause different types of problems. So that, uh, when you do image segmentation, you often do this image thresholding. Uh, for example, this is a um, artificial image with uh, intensity gradient. And then if you set a rule, let's say that um, if the intensity is above certain pixel intensity, then you say one, otherwise zero. Then you can, let's say that you have this pixel intensity distribution. And then if you set above 100 or equal to 100, is now it's a signal and then otherwise it's a, it's not a signal and then you say that this part is white and this part is black so that's why we kind of make a, a boundary of the signal like this that's often the case and sometimes what, what i have experienced several times uh, with the people asking me to do something is that um let's say that goal of the analysis is to measure volume detected spots you want to measure um, you have a 3D image data set, and then you want to measure the volume of uh, three-dimensional spots that you have. And then when you try to explore what's happening, you start seeing that, okay, so it could be, you know, this is a three-dimensional stack. And then if you see in detail, so it's an XY image, so it, the spot looks like this, and then in XC, it looks like this. And what you do is that you try to threshold this uh, box cells, and then in the image there, you would uh, use a 3D object counter to uh, measure this volume. And then let's say that this is a 0 0.011155 uh, cubic micrometer. And then uh, you try to collect those a uh, lot of those spots and stuff. But in fact, I mean, uh, if you look at it, you immediately know that this is a, um, it's a point spread function that is you're looking at. And then, uh, so if this is a, especially this is diffraction limited spots, uh, you are mainly measuring just a volume point spread function using this certain image threshold. But the, the scary part is that if you don't know this, you can measure. But uh, you have to be careful about those, uh, what is differential limited and so on. So this is a second case. So you, you sometimes see. So that, uh, let's say that uh, the goal of analysis is automatic measurement of DNA contents. And then you have a DAPI signal and so on. And then what you do, so there's a lot of this nucleus and then you threshold them and then you get the nicely segmented image and then in case of image day, you use particle analysis, and then you do have to do intensity measurement. And of course, it makes connection to the component analysis, and then you get a lot of these labeled signals. And for each of them, you can get the integrated density or, um, uh, and so on. So that, uh, this looks okay, but in fact, it's not really right because segmented area is affected by the intensity. So that when you do this uh, segmentation, you using the intensity as the definition of the area. And then you're trying to use that area to measure the intensity. So there is certain type of tautology there. And then uh, we can simulate those situations. For example, this is a simulated image. This is a completely um, same size area circles. So this one, this one, it's just that the uh, intensity is different. So that the one is darker and the one is uh, bright. And then um, Gaussian blur is added to mimic the situation, uh, real, real, the realistic situation. But in any case, if you try to threshold this using O2 algorithm, uh, what happens is that this blue circle is this, uh, the, 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 when you draw this circle, this was the original setting. And then this as well, and exactly the same. But um, when you do this Gaussian blur, and you see that this segmentation result in this yellow circle, which is a bit smaller than this, uh, uh, the circle that you have for brightest plot. And in fact, so that the, um, the, the, what I did with this simulation is that the intensity of this signal in this brighter circle should be 66.7% higher. But when you measure this using this old threshold, what you get is that only 41.1% uh, higher. So that uh, you would see this uh, 
pretty significant difference in the comparison results. Okay, so that uh, I don't go detail in this uh, bit depth conversion problem, but if it, when you have this 8 bit image and 16 bit image, and then if you compare, let's say, that downscale from 16 bit to 8 bit, you lose a lot of information. But uh, of course, the signal wise, it looks pretty similar, but um, like this one. But uh, this is uh, one example image from image J. And then if you take this uh, pixel intensity profile, you see the peak here and peak here. And then, I mean, the peak looks, um, the distribution looks same, but of course, if you see this Y uh, scaling, uh, it's pretty different. And then uh, the problem is that um, when you have this automatic uh, scaling that is there in the workflow, you might compare a brighter one and darker image. Let's say that you have a control experiment and then you have a um, inhibitor experiment, which is supposed to have, let's say, half the intensity based on biochemical experiment that you do uh, independent of this image. Um, then you have a half the intensity, but when you capture those images, and then in the workflow, if you have an automatic scaling, because of this uh, bit depth conversion is there in the workflow, you might end up in the image with the same intensity. Um, and then you might get uh, puzzled, say that, okay, why do I have this contract contradictory results in biochemistry and uh, image analysis, right? I mean, uh, so you have to know those things. Um, any case, then what should we do? So that's uh, kind of action, what we should uh, uh, try to avoid all those problems. So that, uh, one thing is that we can make, create a guidelines and rules. And then uh, other ways to, how can we make everything reproducible so that we can check afterward. So that the guidelines, in fact, are, um, the people are discussing this years. So that uh, one famous one is this Chrome's uh, guidelines. Digital images are data and it should be treated as such. Uh, this is a molecular methods in molecular biology, 2014. And then uh, the problem is that hard and fast rules that apply to every image forming disciplines are difficult to create. The National Academy of Science found this out when they were unable to agree on guidelines. So the, um, uh, this is probably uh, um, I mean, if we think a bit, it's probably uh, uh, clear that we cannot agree on guidelines because in a sense, depending on the, what you want to know, there are things you can do and you cannot do, but it depends pretty much on the goal of your analysis, scientific goal. So that uh, you cannot really say no to everything. Um, um, so that, uh, depending on uh, some conditions, you, you can do that. So that, uh, there are, this guideline lists a lot of these uh, rules. Uh, so that you can look at this paper. I can take, pick up some of them, like uh, manipulation of digital image should only be performed on a copy of unprocessed image data file. This is because you have a metadata that comes with the image file, so that uh, it has to be, uh, together with the original data so that uh, you don't lose those information. But uh, of course, digital images that will be compared to one another should be acquired under identical conditions and any post acquisition image processing should also be identical. So that, uh, it, we saw that case with the science paper reproduction that um, there are contrast enhancement that happens uh, differently in different conditions and then the result was presented. You shouldn't do that. Um, it, it goes on uh, many, I mean, this is, you cannot use, uh, um, you have to be careful with the resolution. So this is a Nikist sampling uh, theorem that uh, if you have a different resolution capturing, you have a different results, of course. Um, it's mostly in case of uh, image data, people discuss uh, about this uh, uh, spatial resolution, but um, one important thing is a temporal resolution. So that uh, if you see this movie, which I get from YouTube, um, you see that this, uh, it's a strange helicopter which can fly without water rotating. 
And then now this is because this, if the capture rate, the video frame capture rate is same as the rotation. I mean, it's not same. It's if it's um, in a synchronized with the frequency of this uh, uh, the rotor rotation. Uh, of course, it looks like it's stopped. So um, um, this is a um, okay. It's a daily case problem, but um, even in the science, it has a problem because uh, so this is a simulation of Brownian motion. So that uh, the complete path it took is something like this very um, um, a lot of wiggles. And then uh, if you start from here, it ends up here. And then with the highest time resolution, the total path that it takes is really like this, this red line. But if you capture this uh, Brownian motion with much less time resolution, this time point and this time point, it's probably that total distance is traveled. We estimate that as, as a straight line from here to here. So that if you try to get the speed of this uh, particle movement, what you get is that um, in terms of this, the total distance it travels is much longer per time than when you take these pictures only at two time points, so that it becomes much, much faster with higher time resolution. So uh, that is not really, you know, so the, the, the speed uh, measurement depends on the time resolution. So uh, I mean, uh, so that you have to be careful about those things. Um, and then of course, I mean, rotation of the image or uh, um, if you try to increase the resolution by image processing, you get the different uh, pixel intensities. And then, um, so this is a robot Hase. Um, so uh, he will be talking uh, next week or so uh, with his, uh, um, he, so I saw his Twitter uh, entry. Um, he was, uh, you know, trying to rotate <laughs> his image. And then you see that the degradation happens. If you try to rotate, and then if you try to rotate the second time based on that rotated image, then if you continue that, you get a lot of degradation like this. Okay, so now what do I see is that there are, uh, there could be two types of ruling. So one is that um, like Chrome's data, uh, Chrome's um, um, guideline, we can try to restrict the data handling and analysis behavior. So that, uh, let's say that uh, we have, a, we're going to have a bioimage analysis regulations. Okay? So that uh, um, another way is that we try to let people free to do anything. So we don't even give any guidelines or anything, but we ask people to report everything. Okay, so report data analysis that others can reproduce. So um, um, in terms of this second case, what I see uh, have often and with this method section and papers is that methods that are unreproducible. So that, uh, for example, that uh, it used to be 10 years ago that uh, people only write image analysis section that we use image J for image analysis. And then we kind of repeatedly saying that this is wrong behavior. And then people start to write more, but, um, and then for example, this one looks a lot of information. Yeah, about image analysis, but when you see the detail, for example, here, the sum image was deconvolved with Autoquan X software, media sub networks. The convolution was performed to reduce noise and improve the resolution of process. Okay, that's good, but there are various algorithms for the convolution. Which algorithm was used? I mean, we cannot at least I mean, reproduce this uh, method uh, already. But here, co-localization analysis performed with a metamorph software and image J. So 0.4 micrometer was used as the upper limit for distance between centroids. So there are many co-localization plugins in image J. So which one did they use? So we don't know. So uh, we cannot verify the results. There are, so, so uh, generating kind graphs. So is, was this done manually? I mean, there's no indication about how they did it. Though. So that, uh, the methods looks uh, pretty detailed, but not even enough. So what we try to propose is that um, we have to even uh, make this data handling completely reproducible, which is not 
so difficult. For example, so this is a sample image for me and Jay, and then we're making a kind of panel of these two embryos out of this image, creating figures of such. And then this can be completely scripted, okay? So that, uh, this is just a data handling, but um, for every type of image analysis, it's possible to do those things. As long as results can be reproduced from source data by any others, the image analysis procedure can be evaluated. So that uh, we don't ask to not to do anything, uh, not to do this and that, or you can do this and that. Instead, we ask people to write all the things that they did. And then mistakes and misconducts can be discovered so that uh, we think that text is too much. You can write everything as a text, you know, but it's probably too much. So instead, you can use command recorder or similar uh, and then submit the record when you submit your pick. Or you can write your own scripts and then uh, scripts. So normally when you think about computer programming, you think that this is a kind of specific to this uh, computer programming, but it actually is the best documentation of your methods. So that uh, think that computer programs, programs are not only for automation, but for documentation of your methods. So that the uh, important thing is that this um, um, open source and data archiving, so that uh, we have access to this data that was uh, analyzed. And then if the source code is there, it's kind of complete, uh, completely reproduced. So this is kind of a, um, one slide showing um, how can we uh, submit reproducible biominence analysis workflow elements like uh, workflow codes. You can use GitHub and Zenodo and mint it with digital object identifier. And it can be a very short script as well. And image data can be uploaded to some public server where it's accessible and then these two needs to be associated by some short text explaining how to run the code uh, with which data and so on. Okay, so uh, I come to the conclusion now um, with, um, so there are two types of misconducts, image data handling and analysis with marginal knowledge. So we see cases that people just didn't know and they made mistakes. There are rare cases of this uh, that um, um, the guys who sold one sold to the devil at the crossroads. So you, you might not know this uh, expression, but uh, there's um, um, in the deep south, in the blues musicians, uh, when you want to be really the genius of blues music uh, guitarist, then what you do is that one day you have to go to this crossroads and then you wait at the crossroad and you make sure the devils come down and then ask you, so uh, could you give me your soul? Then I'll give you the blues, right? And then uh, <laughs> uh, the guy becomes, uh, so you might not, you might know that Robert Johnson, the famous blues musician who was said that uh, he sold the soul to the devil uh, because he was so good. I right, guess, um, so those two types, right? And then um, we always, uh, um, 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 so about this uh, mishandling of data is actually, it's not limited only to the image data, okay? But this is a first paper, a first page of Mendel's paper. So that you probably know Mendel, um, even if you're a computational scientist. And then um, this is this manuscript about this uh, inherit, um, um, heredity. So that uh, you probably know this, uh, um, he counted uh, the number of seeds with different shapes and then, or colors. And then you see that the plants one has round shape seed and a wrinkled shape uh, seeds 12 and so on. But uh, I mean, it's three, two, one. Right, and then uh, so that uh, this is a famous uh, observation that was made by Mendel, but um, later on, uh, Fisher, uh, uh, 1930s, the famous statistician Fisher saw these data and then said that he must have beautified the data, 
right? But we don't know whether that's right or not. But uh, so that, uh, according to this uh, statistical analysis of all these results, outliers of uh, data looks like were removed from this uh, table. So um, um, in case of image analysis, uh, it's actually is not unique to the image analysis is what I'm trying to say. So let's say that we have a kind of this counting, right? But that we have original data that is control is there's 144 cases and then treated 155 and so on. Maybe it's just an inhibitor experiment. And then um, you can manipulate these uh, numbers so that uh, uh, there should be two times more. And then you start saying that, okay, I decrease this number to 99 and then this number to 250, uh, 210, and then you submit the paper. But this is bad, of course. But um, this is the same as enhancing the contrast. Let's say that this is a single pixel, this is a second pixel, and then the first pixel has 144 pixel value, and then the second one is 157. And if you try to adjust this contrast enhancement uh, interface, uh, then you get uh, higher contrast like this. But this is exactly the same as this. But if you try to kind of make an outlier, if you kind of make a Gaussian filter or median filter, you can remove the outlier, right? But uh, um, it's not specific to uh, image processing analysis that we have this problem, but that, uh, I mean, uh, it's just that uh, two things should be avoided. But one thing is that image analysis with marginal noise. So that if you don't know, if you don't study image processing analysis, don't do image analysis, right? But, uh, but of course, people wants to do that. So what you need to do is that even if you don't know anything, you just write everything what you did in the methods. Then others, especially reviewers of the paper can evaluate or your uh, lab mate can uh, evaluate what you did. In case of bad guys, the ones that sold one soul at the crossroad to the uh, devil. So that uh, in this case, it's, it's rather that reproducibility protects us from these bad guys because everything has to be documented so that uh, there is no room uh, theoretically to do something wrong. Okay, um, so this is um, 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 the, the third slide from my last slide. So, um, so we often think uh, we often say that um, um, this is an ethical issue. But I think this is uh, really about uh, tradition of scientific methods. So, that, uh, so it, like uh, from times of the 17th century, uh, since this modern science started, I think we try to describe methods as explicit and clear as possible so that other people can follow. Uh, so that uh, we kind of uh, losing this type of scientific tradition in the midst of this complication of uh, uh, computational uh, methodologies. But as I said, it's possible to do that, uh, to make a complete documentation of methods. So that we should do that. So that uh, concerning image data ethics, of course there are. So that, uh, let's say that, uh, but uh, ethics is something to do with social values. So that, uh, for example, like uh, if you're trying to make a figures that is also uh, visually uh, recognizable by uh, colorblind people. So that's ethics. Or um, so ethics is more like, you know, so it's, it's something that um, the value of society that actually we have to think about. So that's ethics, but specifically about this image data and analysis handling, it's more about scientific methods. So, um, so this is a take home message. So um, let's propagate the conventional publishing reproducible image analysis. So that's kind of uh, the, um, the message I'm trying to deliver to uh, many people as, as many people as I can. Um, I would like to acknowledge uh, several people. So uh, Nuno, so he's now in Dresden, used to be in Portugal with Gabi, but um, it's actually, I started making this um, um, 
thinking about this uh, integrity issue based on his request. And then Simon, um, he's an ET Hartrich. Uh, we've been discussing very long time about this, trying to write the uh, manuscript based on this. And then Bern Kukrefer had made an inspiration in the initial um, uh, starting of this uh, um, talk with his slides. And all these um, um, slides, uh, we have been discussing with the reviewers. So Perrin, Giovanni, Sean, Sebastian, Martin, uh, and then it's heavily discussed. And then uh, today, I thank Rocco, Marion, and Julian for moderation. Thank you. And then uh, for the questions, I try to see what has been there from, uh, so that I switch now to, uh, um, Another slice. Which is Kota, if you want, we can resume the questions that they have been made during the webinar. Yeah. So you don't need to show this document. So um, there are several questions about the fact that uh, many times you try to publish a paper and uh, often you choose the uh, prettiest image instead of the most representative. And even though you have a large data set on which you do image analysis, often you are not asked by reviewers or you are not given space in the paper or in the database to upload all the materials. So question is, I try to resume, don't you think that this culture of uh, documentation, open science should also be diffused a bit more among reviewers? Okay, so um, reviewing. So that, uh, I think the primary problem with reviewing right now is that um, the number of reviewers is normally limited to two or three per article. So that uh, on the other hand, the complexity of uh, life science papers are increasing. So that uh, there's a lot of this uh, genomics involved, network science involved, uh, um, bioinformatics involved. There are different types of technology that is put into one paper. And then for reviewing each of those technological uh, <laughs> applications, I think it's, it's quite getting more complex than what one reviewer can handle. And among all those technological difficulties, I think image analysis is one of them, yeah. And then, uh, so that uh, I, I think, uh, so that uh, aside from this, uh, how to make these, uh, um, so I mean, the primary problem I think is that uh, there should be, I would say, more uh, better reviewing itself because uh, um, many reviewers, what I feel. So that, uh, is that they are not even looking at all the details of the methods, right? So that uh, we first should ask the, the publishers to be more to become more serious about reviewing process, to keep the quality of science to a better standard, right? So that's one thing, of course. And then second thing is that as I as as it's mentioned that. Uh, um, having this open source uh, does, might yeah, um, solve the problem, but it's probably then, um, it's kind of a bit longer term problem is that um, the reviewing process becomes more interactive and online and real time. And maybe the reviewing process just continues forever in that case. Huh? So the, in that case, of course, I mean, that's, we have to kind of, uh, um, uh, make a revolution in the, the, the way to keep the scientific quality uh, publication system in a pretty different way. So that, uh, of course, I mean, I mean, I agree with the idea, uh, but, and then by making everything open, like uh, um, keeping this bio archive and uh, archive or met archive and so on, to be the majority of the path to share the scientific results, it, we might be able to uh, see the changes. But I mean, that's far beyond uh, what I can 
definitely say right now. Is that okay? Yes, there was also the comment that often uh, image analysis is made with commercial software. And so not everything is documented well. So do you think after we change this culture among reviewers, we make reviewers more available about image analysis, they will be ask company to document better their software. And this can come as a common advantage for everybody. Yes, I think so. So that, um, I mean, uh, so that I think uh, um, it's kind of out, out of date to hide the algorithm and uh, sell that hidden procedure as a value. So that, uh, um, so that uh, there should be a change in the business model, but I, I'm not in a position to say that it, so you should change and so on. But uh, the, the direction that whole science is taking path towards this open source and open methods, right? So that, uh, um, um, so that uh, what I would propose to this old business style is that, I mean, don't be afraid and open up and then uh, you still probably can make money. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I really think that, uh, um, um, if you cannot evaluate the methods, you know, but uh, I think it's difficult to uh, uh, um, take it as a real science. Okay, thank you. I ask the other panelists to make some other question, otherwise I'll go on with another. Sure, I, 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 will, I will take one topic. I mean, I think there has been many questions on uh, thresholds and um, eventually many were referring to slides. So I would uh, sort of think that Kota would answer them afterwards and we will post the answers on, on the forum. But maybe there's one which is a, a bit more generic and I can try to, to phrase it uh, a bit more general. So uh, if no one writes in the document, so I can still read it. So the question is from Irene, it says, if you threshold with the same equation in different images, you would obtain different values of threshold for different images, as opposed to thresholding with the same number um, than different images. What would be more appropriate? So I, I suppose here the question is, how, how do we ensure uh, that if we use a model, like a mathematical model that actually makes calculations to determine what is the right threshold, that it actually adapts to images of very different intensity distribution and always behaves the same to yield the same result? Yeah, 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 yeah. So technically, so um, um, so uh, the best of always is that uh, you evaluate this threshold procedure. So that uh, you, you're doing a segmentation, and then any segmentation requires some kind of uh, validation of your results. And in fact, segmentation is uh, act of defining the boundary of structure, right? So that it's very serious business in biology or life sciences. So you have to be really serious about this. And then um, um, I just go back to this um, um, slide. So this is a, a slide that um, was about this thresholding problem. And then I see that when you threshold this, you have a different diameter. Now you have a different boundaries depending on the intensity itself. But, uh, but if you try to do, apply O2 algorithms with exactly same square individually for this, this actually the result is okay. So that uh, if you try to threshold each of them should be using the same algorithm, but limited to certain area. So that means that uh, um, um, instead of applying a kind of a global thresholding, by making this individual signal to be automatically threshold, it makes some results. That kind of specific uh, um, technical issue that is there, but even then, there should be some validation of procedure that actually uh, um, would be uh, scientifically more plausible. That is that um, you, you don't have to work only with single channel. You just have a second channel, right? So that, uh, um, in case of a uh, nucleus, you probably can use lamin, for example, as a signal to validate what you're doing. 
as a nucleus boundary. Because, uh, um, I mean, is by definition, uh, there should be embedded in the nuclear embryo. And then it's definition, the definition of nucleus and so on. So that there's such a kind of uh, um, definition can be, uh, if, you, if you can find the best uh, way to define the boundary, use that signal to validate what you're doing and then just go on fire. So that's, I think, the kind of a more um, the straightforward way to uh, validate your results. It, it, it's not limited to uh, um, image intensity threshold. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks, Kota. So the, 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 there's a number of questions about the journals, you know. Um, maybe we can try to like group several questions into one. Like, uh, what, what is the current status with the journals? Like, how many of the journals actually do have um, and do use uh, software that can actually automatically track misconduct or uh, image manipulation? And uh, in your experience, how, how have you seen this uh, evolving in the past, so to say, five to 10 years? So what I know from one year ago is that uh, it quite depends on the, the company, I mean, the publisher. So that, uh, some, some journals are very serious. They even hire several people just for this uh, um, image analysis issues. And then uh, they're tackling this, uh, you know, really serious. But some journals, are not spending much human effort to uh, um, cover this uh, image data or image analysis part. And then uh, there is no tendency in uh, impact factor <laughs> and how serious they are doing this actually. So at, uh, um, that's, so, so there's a contrast between, and then after this, I don't know what happened, but uh, it could be more uh, coordinated effort to uh, uh, overcome this problem. For example, um, simply increasing the reviewing. So that, uh, um, it's always that journal papers are becoming much more, uh, it's always, you know, um, the, the publication cycle. I mean, uh, the speed of reviewing and publication has become faster and faster and faster, but I'm not sure if it's good for science. I mean, it might be good for careers, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I mean, if you really think about in the long run, like uh, let's say 200 years later, so how many people, people would be still there in a sense, right? And then uh, even in a later time, people start evaluating that at this time point was really a lot of crappy papers. <laughs> so, so I think we want to avoid those things. Right? So, okay. so, yeah, sure. So a question, and maybe it's the last one that I take, and then maybe my own uh, Rocco want to take over afterwards. Um, one important question which is related is, uh, uh, it's actually from Mafalda, so I'll just read it. What's your opinion about being a biomage analyst, should I be responsible for warranting that the users do not make this, the, the kind of mistakes that you were talking about today, like writing paper methods for them? So what could be, uh, say, the best policy or the best approach here? And what is the role of the biomage analyst in actually helping uh, the biologist to uh, avoid uh, involuntary misconducts, of course? Um, I think, uh, um, so the Okay, so this is a message to biomage analysts, but uh, so that, uh, sometimes you have to really refuse, right? So that uh, you shouldn't be uh, the best nice person in the institute, because <laughs> uh, sometimes people comes to you with uh, two years of image data that actually you cannot use at all, and then you still need to say this is unusable, right? That is an extreme, extreme situation, but uh, um, so that, uh, the best is that uh, before this to happen, try to convince your research institute or university that there should be professional involved from the starting of the project, any type of project that involves imaging, that image bioimage analysis is there, that they can advise before this tragedy to happen, that PhD students spending two years of image capturing, that means nothing, right? 
Um, concerning this uh, involvement, uh, so that's a kind of a, you know, very active involvement. But um, when you involve in a certain paper, uh, projects and then uh, they need to write a paper, I think biomage analysis analysts should also collaborate to write the paper because um, um, sometimes, you know, I mean, uh, the other people do not have enough uh, even vocabulary to explain the methods. And then they don't know how to uh, put, the, let's say, script or procedure into text or um, 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 uh, or uh, computer script. But uh, um, I think uh, it's more, much better as a kind of publication if such a professional is also involved in authoring the paper. Okay, that's my answer. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, I have a question here about um, image acquisition, which is, shouldn't we address the issue at the level of image acquisition? Manufacturers need to be more forthcoming and considerate with regards to, uh, to today's topic. What do you think about the uh, importance of image acquisition? And do you think it's, uh, it could uh, help or solve at least some issues or? Yeah, 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 yeah. So in, in many things, yeah. So, uh, so I think that it's always that uh, the closest collaborator for biomedical analysis or uh, microscope people, you know. But in, but in addition, it's also that uh, biologists themselves, and then there should be a good discussion on what you want to do. So, that, for example, so I'm just showing this um, um, the 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 Brownian motion simulation. So that. Uh, Let's say this is a cell track. Yeah? Cells are randomly migrating and you have a path like this. And then you want to study something, um, some topic, right? And then, uh, so how do we define the time resolution you want to take these all these uh, cell migration uh, path? So that um, it depends on the question. But uh, sometimes uh, you just need to take two images. So you start with uh, time point zero and then 10 minutes later, you take another picture and you might be able to, if you do this for 1000 cells, you might be able to estimate, you know, uh, the, the, the statistically uh, relevant information for your research. But sometimes you need to do really take high, re high time resolution. So this is a, you know, um, you discuss with analysts, microscope people, biologist, and then you come up with a strategy or workflow that includes this capturing step and then maybe a sale progression step. And then uh, that makes more, maybe more efficient. And then uh, the time resolution that uh, in accordance with this Nike sampling theorem, and then a limitation of your budget, because sometimes you don't want to increase the image number so that you can handle easily with the two pictures rather than 10,000 pictures, right? But uh, I mean, uh, so that, uh, you don't really need to sometimes, and or many cases by discussing, you can really narrow down what you really need to do into uh, what is actually really required to answer to address some question. Is that okay? Did I answer to your question? Not completely. It was also about um, the device itself. So uh, the microscope or the camera, is there ways to uh, improve uh, the way we acquire images? Could that yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. So that, uh, um, the, like a kind of old style uh, I mean, imaging related research is that single person does biology, microscopy, and image analysis. And then in those cases, um, as I just explained, it could be that, um, so um, um, you could design the whole experiment by yourself, knowing what you want to do. And then if this is a single person, this happens in a single person, but nowadays it's a team science uh, that you do, and then you need to discuss well. For example, let's say that uh, um, I'm, I'm just not showing this a cell migration case, but if you, let's say that, uh, that let's say 
you want to study the cell membrane fluctuation uh, for cell migration or something. And then what you probably start doing is that, so trying to get the high time resolution, high spatial resolution image with a very, you know, fast capture and so on. And then, so, so one of the old studies is that you just try to take one dimensional scanning. So this is not really image anymore, but in a sense, this is a one dimensional image. And then you try to study this uh, membrane fracture and so on. But those kind of things, I mean, uh, you probably don't even imagine nowadays because you have a really high end microscopes and uh, image analysis systems. And then biologists want as uh, great as I can. You have to have a three dimensional membrane fracture and so on. But uh, um, it's possible to even make, uh, I mean, try to just use the CCD camera, which scans only one line, you know? So this needs uh, the machine uh, knowledge, how you design those things. And then, uh, um, so this is a device problem. But, um, so those things used to be done by single person, but nowadays there's even three people. So it might be even more efficient if you discuss more together, trying to address question in the simplest and the best way, as clear as possible. So I, I'm kind of answering from different point of view uh, uh, in the same uh, message, I would say. But was that okay, Mario? Yes, definitely. Thank you, Kota. Yeah, good, good. Maybe we pick so, a last question. No? What, sorry? Yeah. We pick a last question and then because of yeah. time, then we, we will close. Go ahead. I had one last question. Uh, would you consider writing a set of guidelines for writing methods, six sections, and terms to use for image analysis? It's actually, um, so that, uh, I started, so last year, so I, so Simon invited me to his uh, um, summer school in Zurich, and then uh, there I did some practical. Um, how can we do <laughs> uh, publication? that is reproducible in image analysis. And then uh, um, I'm not sure that was the best, but maybe we can discuss among lobbyists again. So what would be the best, you know? But uh, I think uh, the, the web services are developing really uh, fast. And then uh, many publishers even are starting to offer this data repository and so on. So that, uh, we might probably need to discuss you know, so uh, um, periodically, so what would be the best way so, um, and in terms of practical uh, steps that we need to follow? Mm. I think Is the question okay? was also what to write into the material method section, what to like the parameters and... So, uh, oh, okay, so, that, uh, so I think the best is that all the parameters that you used should be there. And then, uh, so that the, but this can be, um, you know, written as a script. So that uh, what I am strongly recommending about, so to say, a must is that at least like uh, you study like an image day macro. Yeah. So Anna Klim was giving this uh, very nice tutorial several days ago. But uh, um, so uh, something like this is really, uh, I think, um, so it becomes the, the way you write. So that we can make a kind of a analogy to chemical formula, right? So that uh, if you're a chemist, you know how to write chemical formula and chemical equation and so on, right? And then uh, this is what you learn in high school or university, how you write those things. And then if you don't know that, I mean, uh, you actually, <laughs> as a chemist, you are <laughs> out of business, right? In the same way, because we use those um, descriptive tools, chemical formula, because uh, it's the best way to uh, transfer knowledge to the others. And then uh, in the same way, so that uh, I think um, sooner or later, this uh, scripting at least would be a kind of a, a must technique for uh, life sciences. 
Okay, so that probably brings us to the end. So there were many more questions and uh, we will make sure that all the questions are answered uh, and we will make a sort of file or compilation with the answers uh, of Kota and then we'll post this on the forum. Oh. Uh, the video of the webinar will be available on YouTube, uh, hopefully by tomorrow. And uh, well, let's thank all the participants for staying until the end. And uh, thanks Kota above all. For the very nice webinar. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your participation and then uh, hope for your health uh, in this midst of uh, all this chaos. <laughs>